Good afternoon. It's time to call to order the April 26, 2016 meeting of the Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust. Uh, first item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of the March 22, 2016 Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Just cast your votes. And it is approved. Next on the agenda is to ratify the claims. Mr. Chairman, just one question on the claims. There's an internal transfer to s capital improvement for the railroad safety corridor? Yes, quiet zone. Quiet zone? I was just curious as to the transfer and how the money interplayed between us and them. Uh, the, 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 uh, co the, the um, project is a city project. And so uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're just providing um, the TIF funds. It's just an tra internal transfer from our economic development trust to the capital improvement fund and then they, that allows them to pay the, the contractor. I would move approval. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Please cast your votes. And the claims are approved. Next on the agenda, our item is for individual consideration. Change order number three, amendment one, with the Waters Utility Trust in Oklahoma City, Project PC 0395, Project 180. Package 7B. Eric is here. Eric Wingard is here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have a few items for your consideration today. The first is also Project 180, um, as the Chairman mentioned. This is uh, work that's predominantly occurring on Park Avenue. Um, it's proceeding as the final section. Um, it's obviously between Hudson and Harvey. So right now we're scheduled to have this section open this month. Um, amendment number one takes care of some sanitary sewer, some other quantities and some things that have occurred during the construction period. Change order number three addresses most of the paving changes. There's some roof drains that were added. There was some concrete. We also did a 24-hour incentive to get the Harvey intersection open a little bit earlier to encourage traffic flow. So the total for your consideration today is $77,641, and we're recommending approval. I'd move the item. The motion is second to approve the item. Any questions? Please cast your votes. And the item is approved. Next one up uh, involves uh, another project uh, with addendas, alternate 5A. This is contract award for the uh, pedestrian plaza. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can offer a few additional details for your consideration. There, there were three bidders on the pedestrian plaza project. This is the last of the actual park projects related to Project 180, and so this is the area that is uh, currently a pedestrian corridor between Robinson and Park Avenues. Um, there were six addendum that were issued. Um, the construction period would begin this spring 2016 and would finish up next spring 2017. Downey Contracting was the low bidder. Um, and so the total award with a base plus alternate two and 5A is $3,948,774. We've previously presented this, so I mean, this is going to be a very walkable park. This is going to be a park that's going to have a lot of landscape features. It's got a lot of hardscape. It's going to be made ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a lot of lighting, um, but it's going to provide that really necessary connectivity um, with a lot of additional landscaping and hardscape type rock features with some water added as well. Can answer any questions that you might have on the item. When will this be finished? This will be finished in spring of 17. All right, thank you. Just a reminder, alternate two and 5A, can you elaborate on those beyond the base bid? I can. Um, so we actually, as one of the alternates, bid all of the boulders. So these were some of the lo large rock formations. You might recall some of them from the previous um, PowerPoints. Um, wanted to make sure that we had an understanding of those pricing on those items. So that was the rock. And the 5A is the relocation of the Raven sculpture that's currently in the park. It's to make sure that it's maintained within the park. So we bid that separately with the idea that during bidding, it may have been a possibility to relocate it elsewhere. So it takes care of those two features. Um, some of the other items that are alternates um, include some waterproofing and some other items that we are actually going to look at potentially as value engineering as we go into the project, but they're not being recommended for award today. We feel we can do that with a contractor with potential ads and deducts during the construction process. Thank you. 
A second. Motion to <coughs> excuse me, to approve the contract and bonds. A second <coughs> for discussion. Please cast your votes, and they are approved. Next item on the agenda is uh, package 7A from Project uh, 180 Streetscape, Robert S. Kerr uh, from Hudson to Harvey, and again Harvey uh, to Dean McGee, an increase of $147,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the final Project 180 item for your consideration today. Um, it is change order three and amendment number one. Um, the paving portion of the change order addresses um, the deduction of some wire. There's some electrical vaults that were modified. There was also some traffic striping that was added. Um, there's some water portions of this, which include just some quantities for some field conditions. Um, at this time, um, Harvey is complete. We actually were able to reopen Harvey um, in the interim for the Arts Festival. It is going to have to close temporarily again for a few days. Um, we've got one more vault that needed to be wrapped up that was not something that we could do before the festival here downtown. Um, but that work will be wrapping up shortly. Now, the last major piece of this streetscape package is actually the reconstruction of the Hudson Kerr intersection, and it will actually completely close that intersection when we need to take that into that phase. But we're going to have Park Avenue open completely and Harvey Avenue open completely before we take it down. So um, we're planning on that. That will begin here just late this spring. Um, but uh, we're going to expedite that through the summer, and then we'll wrap this package up as well. Thank you, sir. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Okay. Cast your votes, please. And the amendments and change orders are approved. Next on our agenda is another a huge dollar item. Uh, $621 item. Who would like to explain this one? I'll, I'll move the item. Second. <laughs> I like the way you put things in perspective. Sit down, Brent. It's already approved. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please cast your votes. And it is so approved. Next on our item, a uh, Economic Development Trust private placement anticipation note. What are we talking about here, Brent? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. In 2014, this body entered into an agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase, which we had a, a $10 million line of credit. Uh, at the time that we went out for the RFP for this uh, line of credit, uh, we'd asked for actually a higher, a larger amount. But J.P. Morgan came back and, and provided us two options. One was a lower interest rate um, if we only did $10 million at that time and a higher interest rate if we did the higher amount at that time. We elected to go with the, the, um, the lower amount initially. And so uh, right now the, the financing for this is 30-day LIBOR plus 60, 60 basis points, which is just a little over right now at 1% on an annual basis. Um, last year we came back to you and increased that from $10 million to $18 million. And Today we're asking to increase it from 18 to 25. Uh, we have about 12 projects that are coming to completion and that we anticipate uh, will need these, we need these funds to uh, fund the projects once they're complete uh, over the next six to nine months. And uh, pursuant to our debt management policy in your packet, there is a stress test that we did that's attached where we looked at the current and interest rate environment and, and actually increased a little bit to 1.15%. Then I added an additional 400 basis points and did an additional stress test on it to see if we would still be able to pay not only the principal but the interest off over a certain amount of years, and we were able to do that. And that is provided in your packet. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions from trustees? What is the new rate at $25 million? It's still 60 basis okay. points. Um, plus the LIBOR, and the LIBOR today is 44 basis points. Okay, thank you. I'd move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any comments or questions? Seeing them, please cast your votes. And the resolution is approved. Thank you, sir. Next up is another uh, economic development gold bond uh, situation. The uh, transferring the funds from the 2016 taxable series uh, Explain this one to us, please. Sir. Uh, back in 2007, when the citizens authorized the issuance of $75 million in gold bonds, um, 
it became our practice to once we do our initial bond issue and we receive the proceeds is the funds come into a city when the, we receive those funds they go into a city fund and the, the practice is to move it from the city funds over to the economic development trust and um, we're doing on February 23rd um, the city uh, issued the last of the $75 million, a $12 million bond authorization. And um, what we're doing here, this is just mainly an administrative thing it's in order for us to be, allow us to move the money from the city fund to the economic development fund. And so right now we have about $13 million in the account um, on the economic development trust side. Once the money's moved over there, we'll have approximately $25 million. We have a motion to approve. Any comments or questions? Please cast your votes and the resolution is adopted. Next up, Economic Development Trust Agreement with uh, Boeing Company. Yes, sir. This is the Boeing contract um, for the creation of 900 jobs. Um, this body authorized staff to negotiate with them a little over a year ago. And today we have the uh, final agreement um, in place for year consideration is to create 900 jobs, average salary of around $90,000, includes an $80 million in the capital investment, and uh, for a $6 million uh, gold allocation. And um, with that, um, it's currently, um, currently this project employs over 500 new jobs. So. Um, right now, I talked to them this morning, and they're right at 500 new jobs. So, um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We have a motion to second. Uh, the criteria then that uh, will be evaluating for them to receive these monies uh, are the the number of jobs, the 90,000 salary, and uh, the 80 million dollars in uh, yes, capital sir. expenditures. Yeah, and we included a ramp up on the capital because they've been creating the jobs while they're actually um, doing the capital investment. So um, we needed to, um, we've allowed for that in the contract. Now this is Boeing contract number three. Yes, sir. How are one and two doing? Uh, one and two are still doing very well. Um, actually, um, well, I don't have any up-to-date information for you today, but um, uh, they are still progressing and increasing in the job counts there. Do we have a motion to, I thought we did, and second. Uh, any other questions? Please cast your votes, and it is approved. Next on the agenda is uh, a contract with Alan Gibbs and Halleck uh, dealing with the audit services. Yes, sir. This is for audit services for this fiscal year, starting the next fiscal year. Um, the, the city uh, typically goes out and on, on every five years they go out and do an RFP for professional services like this. Um, and typically, what is typical, what typically happens is the economic development trust or city trust will follow suit and hire the same for efficiency purposes. And uh, uh, the committee selected Allen Gibbs and Hulick. Um, City Council approved their contract last week on the 19th, and um, the cost for the Economic Development Trust is a little over $23,000, which is a little below what, we'll, what we paid last year. So um, there was a significant cost savings on the city side, and um, I, that's one of the reasons why they went with them. I move approval. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Please cast your votes, and it is approved. Next up is the uh, Alliance for Economic Development 2015-2016 uh, third quarter report. Are you giving that for? No, sir. Uh, Nicole Goodman from the Alliance is going to just give you some highlights of the, of the report. Oh, ah, okay. Hi, Nicole. Good afternoon. Kathy's out of town, so I'm, I, I know you have a copy of this in front of you, and I won't go through the whole thing in the interest of bad weather coming, but I'll hit on a few highlights. This report is for January through the end of March. And um, as you'll see, the convention center and hotel is the first area she's covered. We are working with the team to acquire the property for the convention center site. 
Um, as of this writing, there were 19 parcels acquired, three negotiation, and three condemnations to be filed. In regard to the hotel, there's an, a, another team working to finalize some term sheets. We have, you know, four developers that resulted from an earlier RFP. Um, we will be getting additional information from them at a time in the near future, so we're working on that timeline and finalizing items um, to ask them for additional information. Um, a couple of things under the job creation efforts. Boeing, the Boeing project, um, they're expected to complete their construction on the building in June. We've been working with them on a couple of environmental issues. There's a parking lot that we're putting in uh, that will actually solve a couple of problems. Um, so we have a little bit more to do there. And then on the GE Global Research Center, um, we at the Alliance have been working on um, an EDA grant that did some streetscaping um, on Stiles, which is complete. And then 10th Street from 235 to Lincoln is the next part of that project. And we um, have plans almost finalized, waiting for a little input from Eric and from planning. We'll move forward on that streetscape project. Uh, moving on down to the next section um, in regard to Paige Woodson, you know, uh, the Alliance has a Community Development Corporation now, Project Progress OKC, and that entity will be operating the auditorium space, a historic auditorium space within Paige Woodson when it's done. Um, probably that space will be able to be utilized in December of 2017, so it's really, it's a really beautiful space. We're working on that. And then um, near MLK and Northeast 16th, in the, where the Truman School site is, we're um, finalizing some work on that site, trying to determine how to develop that. And we've actually um, commissioned a traffic study because we had some concerns from residents in the area about how that would impact traffic. We have a draft study back, but we haven't finalized that study yet. Um, let's see. On the Innovation District, we expect a first report in June on those efforts from Brookings and Project for Public Spaces. They won't be done with their work at that time but we expect a first report from them at that time. Several downtown developments are in the works. You've probably heard about most of these from Steve Blackwire. Keeps us all informed of those as well. Residences at 21C, right around the 21C Hotel, First National Building, and then uh, David Wanzer's group is doing both the Sunshine Cleaners Building and the Townhouse Apartments, and those are all very exciting projects. A couple of that, uh, some activity in TIF districts. In February, we had the approval of the new Quarter Shore TIF District and the amendments to the TIF to, um, to create the new TIF for the First National Center. I've already mentioned um, the Paige Woodson work under CDC. And then um, under retail, there are a, a group of people from here, as, as we do every year, we'll be going to ICSC to the conference. That's coming up in a few weeks. So we'll be meeting with retailers and developers to try to see who might be interested in coming to Oklahoma City. So I, I will be making that trip. This will be my first time, along with 50,000 other people, apparently. So. Looking forward to that. I'll try to answer any questions that you have. Questions for Nicole? Uh, thank you for the good update. Just sure, a absolutely. question about the Clio and the community engagement around 50th and Lincoln. Can you give a little more information? Um, yeah, I, you know, I know that, that we have, um, I haven't been involved in that personally, but I know that we've offered a proposal to, to manage maybe that community, community input, community engagement. Um, I haven't heard if we've received a response on that proposal uh, to uh, give more information um, the Oklahoma Land uh, Commission uh, is uh, currently uh, looking into uh, developing uh, approximately 136 uh, acres on Northeast 50th and uh, Lincoln and um, um, part of uh, my request was for them to uh, have some type of community engagement so they did uh, reach out to the Alliance mm -hmm. um, about a uh, community engagement uh, piece and uh, the Alliance, I, I believe, sent over uh, a proposal um, for the Alliance to handle the community engagement piece. Uh, 136 acres, that's a lot of acres to develop uh, in the inner core of basically a neighborhood. So we needed some type of engagement uh, there. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. We recall from the widening of Kelly at points, there was a significant amount of opposition in the past. So Absolutely. That is, that is a spirited, <laughs> spirited area that I appreciate that you're navigating. Great. Any other questions? Thank you. I'd move receipt of the report. Thank you. Your motion received. Your second. Second. Please cast your votes. And the report is received. Next on our agenda, the uh, Economic Development Foundation 2015-2016 third quarter report. Good afternoon, Michael Ogan with the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber. Bear with me a little bit, I have a little bit of a cough. It's a remnant from a cold. Hopefully each of you have a 
copy of the report in your packets. First part walks through sort of the last three months worth of activities which have been consistent with our normal first quarter of the calendar year activities, third quarter of the cities. Um, fairly busy working on continuing to build relationships, although I haven't had any major announcements this quarter, which is also somewhat consistent with this time of year. Um, if you sort of go to the next section back in the report that talks about performance to date, um, we see that our business retention and expansion programs and retail programs are pretty much running a little bit ahead of goal so far this year um, on our business recruitment. Um, it's a little bit the other way. We're a little bit behind, particularly in job creation. 2015 was a pretty much down year. We expect 16 will be fairly flat based on talking to economists at the local and national level, and that 17 will hopefully be a, a much more positive year. We did see this year um, enough positive growth in non-oil and gas sectors that we still have a slightly positive overall net job growth in the region as well as the state. So while the oil and gas industry have been down, other sectors have um, made enough up for that that we're staying pretty much level. We've seen in the last monthly unemployment reports that we've ticked up slightly. We're slightly above 4%. We have been below 4% um, for a number of years. We're still in the top 10, if you want to look at it that way, in terms of lowest unemployment rates in the country. Um, so the economy outside of oil and gas is still doing fairly well, um, although we'd love to see things better. Um, also included with the report is a couple of updated um, information on marketing pieces, a new economic forecast, um, and a piece that we call at a glance. It's basically a fact piece that profiles the region and metropolitan area. Those we generally update about this time of year as the data from the end of last year has a couple of month lag period. So we usually don't see the, the end of 2015 data that we can use for new reports until about this time. I don't want to cover any specific items um, but we'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? What uh, is uh, going on in the Xerox plant out at uh, Yukon Parkway in I-40? Um, Xerox acquired a um, customer service, a financial operation um, a number of years ago, ACS, um, and they've had a three or 400 person call center operation out there. They're now expanding that operation. We understand they're adding about 400, addition, excuse me, 400 additional jobs to that function. Thank you, sir. Wishes of the trustees. I'd move the item. We have a motion. Second. And the report is received. General Manager's report. Uh, yes, sir. Um, the, the task for in your packet is the March 31st, 2016 General Manager's report. Uh, some of the highlights are they include the borrowings that we had for TIF 2. Um, refle it reflects that we borrowed about $3.5 million for March to help pay for some of our claims. Um, and then the outlet mall. Um, from August through March has exceeded our targets and in the discussions that Regina and I have had with them, they feel very good about the replacements that they put out there when the Sacks off fifth leaving, they, they replace that with the North Face and other things and they feel very optimistic about uh, the path that they're going there with the outlet mall. I did want to point out with under the strategic investment program, um, under the detail, uh, we received a letter which I did forward to all of you. Uh, from Baker Hughes asking to terminate their contract. We went ahead and included in here, but all subsequent uh, agreement or uh, subsequent uh, reports that we provide to you that we'll, we will exclude those in the future. So, um, but uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We have a motion to receive. Is there a second? Second, any discussion? Please cast your votes. And the general manager's report is received. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Brings us to comments from staff. I just want to point out that the next month's meeting has been rescheduled for Wednesday, May 18th at 9 a.m. Change in day, change in time. 
Thank you, sir. Any other comments from staff? Okay. Uh, any comments from trustees? Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to offer a word of thanks to the city and the Alliance and to staff and really everybody that helped the Arts Festival move. It probably wasn't as seamless behind the scenes as it looked uh, from an attendee, but I thought it went off beautifully. I thought the Bicentennial Park was wonderfully highlighted. I thought the space worked great, but I know with all the infrastructure issues and the cost and the coordination with the Arts Council that it had to be a heavy lift in a short period of time, but just wanted to say a word of thanks to everybody involved in that. Um, I heard from artists that participated, how kind people are, the volunteers that show up to help the artists, the way the city complements the, the effort, and that invites people back. So uh, from my perspective, a word of thanks. I thought it went off great. Thank you, Jim. Any other comments from trustees? Seeing none, comments from the public? Seeing none, we are adjourned.